So the last thing we want to talk about here is non-conventional trademarks. So we've talked about, you know, trademarks are names, they're catchphrases, logos, uh, stuff like that. Non-conventional trademarks are other things like, um, you know, uh, music, sounds, colors, patterns, smells, motions, holograms, uh, stuff, stuff like that. Okay, uh, so some examples, ready, of a famous sound mark, guess it. little out of key, but that's Sweet Georgia Brown, and if you've ever gone and watched the Harlem Globetrotters, that's their theme song. Now, they didn't write that song, they don't own that song, but, or maybe they do own it now, maybe they bought it, uh, but when you hear that song, you think of the Harlem Globetrotters. The, um, any like jingle, like I'm, I'm loving it, whatever, <laughs> McDonald's jingle, the NBC chimes, NBC, mm, 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 NBC, you know, the lion roar for the MGM logo, uh, the uh, law and order, ta -dong, you know, dong, sound. those are all sound marks, they're oral marks that, you know, there's not a ton of them registered in the United States, but there's, there's some. Color marks, Tiffany's blue boxes, Okay, uh, UPS Brown. Okay, it doesn't mean that UPS owns brown exclusively or Tiffany owns that color blue, but you certainly can't, you know, sell bed sheets and call them Tiffany's Blue. You certainly cannot have packaging for jewelry or anything that has that colored packaging. Okay, you couldn't have a package delivery service and have brown trucks. <laughs> You know, it's just kind of is, is what it is. So that's color marks. The fabric pattern we have is a Burberry uh, fabric pattern. So you can own fabric patterns as long as, you know, these um, colors, sounds, patterns, motions acquire secondary meaning. Okay, meaning you, you see that, that Burberry pattern and you don't think, oh, that's a nice flannel pattern. You think, oh, that's Burberry pattern. Or you get a box of blue and you're like oh shit I'm getting some Tiffany's you know like it's acquired secondary meaning it's not just like oh you know I'm getting you know some Fred Myers jewelry I'm getting that Tiffany shit you know whatever Ju whatever jewelry is jewelry to me but look at me I'm a freaking <laughs> my painted on hoodie and my overalls my tractor like I give a shit about fashion and clothes and stuff um, you can own motions, so uh, the motion of the Apple Pinwheel of Death, as much as you love seeing it, that's a trademark of the Apple company. You can have trademarks on holograms, so like uh, hologram cards or maybe Tupac's hologram, I don't know, uh, but you can trademark holograms as long, again, as they've acquired secondary meaning and someone sees that hologram and they associate it with you as the provider of goods and services. You can trademark smells. There are 13 of them filed in the United States. One of them that some of y'all may remember is the smell of Play-Doh. That is a trademark of the Play-Doh. Play-Doh, 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 yuck. Um, so happy my son's almost three. He plays Play-Doh all the time. He does not eat it, thank you. Um, uh, Verizon stores. If you ever go into a Verizon store, there's a distinct smell that they pump into there. That's trademarked. Some companies have a, a trademark on the smell of their engine oil. It smells like fruity, something like that. And then you can have shape marks. These are for three-dimensional objects. You can have a trademark on them. So one of the classic examples I go to is the Coca-Cola bottle. So Coca-Cola bottle, um, the, the bottle, right, uh, has no utility value in the sense of, well, yeah, the bottle holds um, acidic cola beverage caffeinated beverage, but the bottle itself doesn't actually have a utility function in terms of its shape or its design. Like it doesn't do something particular. It doesn't make the acidic beverage flow into your mouth 
without making you burp or something like that. If it did, you would lose your, your trademark on it, okay? But you see that glass bottle and you associate it with Coca-Cola and you, and you know it's a Coca-Cola you know, beverage inside of it. Um, Owens Corning owns the trademark on pink insulation. Uh, they don't, you know, if the color pink kept your houses colder or warmer, that trademark would be nullified. But when you go, you know, and you, you know, trade, when you look at, uh, you know, insulation for a house, which I know you all do, only pink insulation will be made by Owens Corning. All other brands will have like yellow or brown or whatever color, but yeah. And obviously they use the Pink Panther, which they have to license the copyright on. Some other examples, um, yeah, I said Tiffany's blue, but like you could make uh, t-shirts or notebook covers in that Tiffany blue color, just not call it Tiffany blue. Like they don't own that color exclusively, but they own, they own it in their product market. So jewelry, platter, plateware, and, package, and packaging for that stuff, they own it. But you could make Tiffany blue looking sneakers or anything like that, okay? Cadbury owns the color purple and that color purple on chocolate candies only. So that's why you see like Skittles in that purple or whatever, but for chocolates, that's owned by Cadbury. Uh, Louboutin owns red uh, heels on high-heeled shoes, only on high heels, not on, um, you know, uh, low tops or sneakers or anything. And Apple owns the design on the Apple Store, the glass uh, Apple Store. So you can own designs on, on buildings too, as long as you see that building and you look at it and it's acquired secondary meaning and you associate it with the provider of the goods and services. John Deere tried to register for a federal trademark on the color green. They were actually denied that initially because the color green had long been used in agricultural products before John Deere tried to file. So they therefore then filed for a trademark on the color of green and yellow, and they won. So in the ag agricultural um, you know, industries, they own the trademark on uh, green and yellow. Recently, I believe a couple years ago, a company released uh, you know, a water tanking system for you know, whatever watering uh, crops or roads or whatever, um, and it was green and yellow, and John Deere was able to s successfully sue them for uh, the use of that. All right, so the key for non-conventional trademarks is that the element of the trademark, the color, the color pink, the color green and yellow, the design, etc., cetera, uh, cannot have a, a utility value to it or else uh, you, you, know, you won't be able to have a trademark on it. That's actually subject to patent. So a good example of this is a few years ago, uh, the patent on Legos, it's male to female interconnecting you know, circles used to build with patent expires. So what the company did is they filed for a, um, a trademark and they did this because when their patent expires, it means that anybody could use um, you know, a circular male-female connector uh, for blocks. And so you have things like Mega Blocks and, you know, other, other companies come out with, you know, blocks that connected like Lego. Um, so what it did is to try to maintain a per perpetual monopoly on this is they registered for a non-conventional trademark, meaning that they would have, you know, basically an endless monopoly on this, claiming that when you looked at those blocks, you thought of Lego. It was, it, was, it had secondary meaning. However, the main function, right, or the, 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 the part you were looking at, the circular interconnecting male-female element of the blocks, right, had complete utility value. So they lost that trademark. They were denied that mark. However, they have a non-conventional mark on the uh, Lego figures. So when you see those figures, all right, you think of a specific brand of, you know, block making, you know, toy building, uh, you know, company, le the Lego company. And this is just really, this is really important. So they were denied in 2010 um, for a uh, non-conventional trademark on its blocks, but in 2015 did get a non-conventional trademark on its people or the, the figures. And that's just a little bit on trademark. That's trademark basics or trademark essentials. Um, in our next class, 
uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know trademark appropriation for art and trademark appropriation for critique, largely based upon the chapter of Bollier. All right, so have a good one. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, do something nice for yourselves. Um, start thinking about Mother's Day. That's coming up in a few. You know, uh, and enjoy enjoy the world. You know, enjoy what you can out of it. And I hope you all are well. Hit me up if you need anything. You know the math. Um, yeah, take care. Peace.